Thank you. Um, thanks, Bruno, for the in introduction. Um, let me first um, thank the organizers for inviting us um, to come and share our experiences in the territorial development approaches in Africa. I think a lot has been said by Julio and uh, Bruno um, on the definition of territorial development, on the situation of um, Africa, particularly um, as pertains to its development um, pathways. So I will just give really a background on where we are coming with the Rural Futures Program and um, our experience to date and the next steps that we envisage with regard to the implementation of the program. Now, after 10 years of implementing CADAP, we have had, um, for now, I think 40 African member states that are effectively engaged at different levels in the implementation of CADAP is the actually the Comprehensive Agricultural Development Program. Um, we have about 28 countries that have had development investment, sorry, the CADAP investment plans. Um, on reviewing the implementation of the CADAP process in, in our member states, we did um, conclude that for CADAP and for agriculture to play its role, um, that it's, it has to play in the development of the continent, given the fact that it employs more than 70% of the African population, um, we need to do more in terms of um, just developing the investment plans because we did get to a point where we have the investment plans and the question was, so what next? What do you do with the implementation of these investment plans? And um, what we realized was that a sectoral approach will not really work in terms of bringing change and structural transformation in our member states. So we decided um, after guidance from our, mem from our heads of states to start this program called the Rural Futures Program, which um, at the core of it is saying that we need a multi-sectoral, multi-stakeholder approach to Africa's development. Um, we need to go back and look at planning as a critical aspect of development. And we really need to take this territorial approach in terms of um, the planning process in, in African member states in order that we can create the conditions that will favor the full implementation of the CADAP vision, um, as well as other policies that member states are putting into place. So the Rural Features Program, the vision of the program was really driver development that is people-centered. I think Bruno made reference to the fact that while we have noticed significant growth, economic growth in several African member states in recent years, a uh, um, thing to note here is that rural poverty is increasing and will continue to increase till about 2040. And obviously as Africans, this is not something that we want. So the Rural Futures Program is saying, how do we ensure that this economic growth that countries are experiencing is inclusive, is equitable, and bring the rural space to contribute fully in both the, 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 the development of the of member states, but also to benefit fully um, in this development. And of course, to have this, we need to have the appropriate governance policies and practices that will accompany um, this kind of change. That question of what pathways should we follow, and Bruno showed some images, some slides, and some questions whether you want to go through the industrialist um, uh, uh, approach or is the agriculturist approach. But for, for Africa, I'm not sure whether um, that should be the choice, whether we need a combination of these. And this is the questions that we are asking ourselves um, in this program.
what they've also done is try to do an overlay of the, 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 the agricultural um, zones with other economic activities happening in this region um, so that you could see the trade-off that needs to be made uh, in terms of decision making. Um, and so they have done this mapping um, and they've uh, realized that in some regions, perhaps agriculture is not what should be the driving um, sector for development in that region. Um, the, the, the different percentage and the kinds of policies that you should uh, or the government should take to promote um, different uh, sectoral activities. Uh, but the main point that I want, I'm trying to make here is through this mapping, uh, a, we get a better sense of the relationship and the contribution of agriculture in the development of <coughs> these regions. Perhaps mining is what might be most important for a particular region. Last week I was in Conakry and was discussing this with the officials in Conakry. And this region, Pool F, um, we were told you have a lot of mining activities there. It's also an important agricultural sector. But when the mining activities are go going on, everybody ab abandons the agricultural activity and focuses on the mining um, sector because they get more revenue um, from engaging in the mining. So uh, the, the just uh, 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 a cookie cutter approach to say agriculture is the entry point um, and every the policies should not be um, discriminatory in terms of supporting um, other economic activities might not be what we want to promote in, in our member states. We might want to support them to look at this kind of agro-economic uh, mapping um, for them to be better able to see how best to design policies that will support um, growth and development in, in the regions. We think that they are emerging good practices, but there are all still challenges that needs to be addressed. Um, and um, we hope that through this whole territorial development approach, um, we can have a process that is very endogenous, that gives ownership at the level of the territories or the communes to be able to um, work with the different levels of um, uh, governance structures in the countries. Uh, that said, we feel that to move forward where we promote this multi-sectoral approach, we have to encourage uh, member states to have national development policies that have at its core the issue of rural development and rural transformation. Because in that way, the different department, government departments will be forced to collaborate, but also work through their own respective mandate to deliver um, on the, the actions that can help bring this transformation at the level of, um, of, of a territorial approach. Um, we know that, as, 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 as Bruno mentioned, that the issue of sectoral coordination is a challenging one. It's not an easy one. Um, and we have the, the, I think Bruno used the word of holistic paralysis. I think a lot of people get scared of that. But I, I even think we have to. We, we need to try because there's no other way forward. It's not because something is difficult and challenging that we don't do it. We do it because we want to bring improvement in the life of African people. So we, we just have to go down that route and find the best way to bring those innovative practices into, into play. What we have done in the Rural Futures Program in the last year um, is really along the four uh, program areas that I mentioned, um, one is to continue that thinking on territorial approach um, and see, and just present in a very practical and cartographic manner the realities of the continent. And, and Bruno showed the, 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 the Rural Futures Atlas, which we presented in the very first African Rural Development Forum that was hosted by President Boniyai in Cotonou. And it was very well received. I think just seeing the the, those, those, those images was kind of a reality check on where we are. Uh, and I think we, will go, we are going to continue to do that. I have to, at this point, I really express our thanks to the French Development Agency. It's because it's with their financial support that we did manage to um, develop the Atlas that was very well received. And of course, we went ahead and organized the first African Rural Development Forum, which really was a platform 
for sharing knowledge, both from African countries, because there are good practices going on and experience um, in the continent to be shared, but also with um, Latin America and South America. <coughs> and again, I'd like to thank um, Julio and Remis because they brought the Latin American experience to the conference and a lot of good practices were learned. Um, we've developed this kind of strategic partnership, um, both for South-South and North-South cooperation um, to be able to learn. We, we had the European um, Commission in the meeting in Cotonou presenting their um, agricultural policy. We have engaged at very high political level to get political championing of ter this territorial approach. And so we have President Boni Yai um, as the champion of the Rural Futures Program. Um, I'm really pleased to say that within a very short space, there have been a lot of buying um, of this approach, and we are working with the CGIs through the Wealth um, Fish Program to kind of test this on the ground in aquatic ag agricultural systems. We will continue to um, prepare for the revision of, of, of the um, mini atlas and organize the next AFD. Um, we, we plan to hold this after every two years and build on the strategies um, partnership. But also on a very concrete note, based on the experience in Guinea, um, we want to roll out this whole territorial mapping exercise in a few member states. Um, so we will do land use mapping that would identify the various economic activities in the regions, but also look at the population dynamics in this, in this region in a very practical manner. Um, we are also doing a skills audit, which we've started. We've done for five countries. We plan to do for 15 countries, just to understand the kinds of skills and the skills shortages that we have in the member states. So we can say all the nice things and have all the beautiful investment plans and strategies, but if the capacity is not there, um, then people can take advantage of this. So the skills audit is an exercise that we are doing right now, and hopefully we will be able to um, conclude about 15 countries to have a good view of what is happening across the continent. We will continue to do um, the policy and institutional mapping and the investment mapping as well. Um, as you all know, this is not a new story. We have a lot of investment coming into the continent um, and we are very pleased with that. Private sector is very welcome, but we also want to make sure that these investment are in the right direction. We are planning to have an employment conference in 2014. Um, and the skills audit that I mentioned in the previous slide will be um, contribute to the employment conference. We are working on this blueprint for rural transformation, um, which will be kind of a decision-making chain, if you like, that can help member states to review where they are in the process of uh, transformation. Now, uh, of course, resource mobilization and communication. I will just, in conclusion, use this opportunity because I'm not sure when I'm going to have it again, to say um, I know most of the people here are either researchers and doing beautiful work um, in not taking, undertaking research in many African countries, but most of you are also development partners for many African countries. And I really think, and I would like to appeal to you that you have an opportunity to also help influence and promote this approach of territorial development in our member states. Um, I know we are all very used to doing the sectoral approach, so we are in agriculture, we are in CADAP, and that is it. We are so comfortable in that space that we don't want to go out of that space. But then the question is, are we going to make the change that we want? Are we going to have the difference in the life of African people? We don't think so. So I would like to encourage you. I, I mean, the fact that you are all here tells me that this is the approach that you, you, you see is important. And of course, the name of this um, platform is um, Platform for Rural Transformation. For that to happen, you need a multi-sectoral approach. So please, in your programming, in your funding, in your engagement with member states, communicate this idea to have this multi-sectoral approach and territorial approach as a center of national development planning. Thank you. <laughs>